Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific car review of course in the world of GT Sport and this time we're moving right down the food chain from the five, six, seven hundred horsepower race cars, and supercars and that kind of thing down to much more modest territory but as many of you know and as we've discussed on this channel either in car review form or in tuning form there are plenty of vehicles which could seem to be maybe slower and as I said lower on the food chain of performance but that doesn't mean that the racing itself is any less competitive. In fact, you'll often find some of the most competitive racing tends to be between 100 and say 300 horsepower, because the cars and the differences between them tend to be much narrower than in the higher classes, and every little move and mistake that you make in a slower car has a much larger ripple effect, where they don't have the kind of power and more often than not straight line performance to make up for those mistakes. So in the case of this car, the Toyota SFR, I think this is a perfect example of a car which puts fun first and then performance kind of secondary to that. In a similar way to something like a Mazda Miata or aka the MX-5, it's a car which is more about the driving feel, the driving feedback, the driver enjoyment, not so much about winning races. However, with that being said, that does not mean that the car doesn't have potential, because of course we reviewed before the SFR racing concept, a fantastic little car, great track vehicle, so is that raw ability present here, or is it only brought out in that racing form? That's the question that needs answering in the case of this car. Well, interestingly, I would say it's kind of a mix of yes and no, because the raw ability in certain ways is definitely here. The SFR is an excellent handling car, it's ultra compact. Funnily enough, though, it's not quite as light as you might assume. The car looks as though it could easily weigh seven or 800 kilos, like a K car, but it actually doesn't. It weighs more than a metric ton, which is pretty high considering. It weighs 1,050 kilos. That's actually pretty hefty for a small car like this. Now, in terms of power, you're looking at pretty much perfect rivalry between this and an MX-5 because it's got 133 horsepower, so a little bit more power than you might expect from a Mazda, but from a smaller engine, a 1.5 litre. It puts out 111 pound-feet of torque, which is pretty thumpy for a car which is pretty small as well, and the horsepower per tonne is a modest 127 which as i said or as i alluded to isn't necessarily as good as you might hope because the weight is higher if this car were for instance the weight that you'd expect it to be of eight nine hundred kilos it would be far higher now of course the pricing is very low it is on the racing version as well in comparison to how good it is but thirty thousand credits that's kind of a steal. Again, great rival to the MX-5. So what is this car actually like to drive? How does it perform? Well, I already said that the handling is very good, and it certainly is. It's much more beginner inclined, of course, than the racing version by definition, but that doesn't mean it's any less able. In fact, this is a pretty quick little car. Now, I will not say that this is something like the Honda S660, where it's just a brilliant all-rounder in that kind of category, or even something like the Porsche, the classic Porsche 356, and it's not necessarily quite as dominant as, for instance, the classic Mini in terms of cornering ability, in particular when it comes to average speed. But what this car does have, in once again a similar way to something like an MX-5, is excellent manners. Think of it as like a, a tiny version of a BMW M3. The M3 is not the best thing around. It's not necessarily even the fastest thing in its class, but it's a brilliant car because it feels fun to drive, it's engaging, you get tons of feedback to the driver, and it feels great through corners. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the fastest thing around, but it feels great while you're using it. And at the end of the day, some cars aren't about being the fastest, they're about being fun. The M3, the MX-5, tons of others too, definitely fall into that category. And I would say that in the case of this car, it kind of does as well. The SFR is, as I mentioned earlier, fun forward. That is the most important thing about this vehicle's essential concept and the idea behind it. So, secondary to that, any kind of trackability is a bonus you could argue. Now, the car does have some. I'm not going to go ahead and claim that it's the fastest thing out there, because it's certainly not, but it is good. It's not necessarily quite as OP 
as you could say the racing version is, but that's not too surprising. In its own way, it's a good little sports car. It's not necessarily going to beat stuff like the Classic Mini or the Honda S660, but there are definitely other things which it could beat. For instance, it wouldn't surprise me if in a head-on test this beat some of the other K cars, like the Daihatsu Copen, for instance, or maybe the newer Mini in N100, for example, or a couple of others like that, the Fiat 500 maybe. So the car has ability, but I would put this one at least at a glance and after about 10 minutes or so of driving it I would probably say that this car feels a little bit more on the middle bracket kind of range it's not the best thing out there but it's definitely not the worst thing it's more like the the Hyundai Genesis if you will of N300 for example where that one certainly isn't as quick as something like a Porsche GT3 or a TBR Tuscan but it's not anywhere near the slowest either. It's a great track car and it's one which I bring up quite a lot when it comes to my tuning videos because it's a great benchmark to compare other vehicles to. Likewise with this Toyota, it feels great through corners, it's very fun, I love the look of it inside and out and I think it's kind of a shame that Toyota didn't actually produce this because, I mean, maybe I could, I could be wrong of course but I think it would have sold well. It's got the Fiat 500 kind of cute appeal to it, but it's a thumpy little performance car. Would have made a perfect little stable mate for the 86 and now the Supra. And it even kind of looks like a mini Supra. The new Supra in particular, of course. So overall, my thoughts on this car are, it's a great little sports car contender. It's fun first, fun forward. The handling is definitely its best attribute. Straight line performance, not so much, but it's got enough power and enough performance to get the job done under most circumstances, but don't go into races expecting this to necessarily be the best thing out there. I don't think many people would, but some people might based on how good the racing version is. You could be fooled by that one into thinking that this one will be brilliant as well, and it doesn't quite work out that way, in particular because of the straight line speed for its power. Ultimately though, definitely worth checking out, and it's only 30 grand, so it's not exactly expensive, or if you're like me, you'll probably have won like 7 or 8 of these so far, and rarely use them. But overall, very fun little car, and I would say that that is easily the best thing about it, how fun it is to drive. But that's it for my thoughts, of course stick around here on the channel for more reviews and tunes, and until then I'll see you next time, but for now, as always, thanks for watching.